Wings. And got the win over John Karanka. So another lefty for the Cubs tonight, Glendon Rush, and he'll face Reed Johnson to start it. Get you the rest of the Blue Jays lineup here in a moment. Johnson two for five, including a big three-run homer last night, and we're underway. Ball one on Johnson. That's a strike. One and one. 80 degrees here at game time tonight. And winds out of the south, which means balls hit the left field, should get an assist from that win. Last night the wooden was blowing out to right field, tonight out to left field. And a base hit to right for Johnson, who has three hits in this series. I mentioned a home run last night. He has four career home runs against the Cubs. Let's check out the rest of the Blue Jays Southwest starting lineup. Alex Rios coming up right now. Vernon Wells after him. Hillenbrand, Hill, Menachino, Zahn, McDonald, and Towers. Basically the same lineup, one through eight. For John Gibbons tonight against another southpaw for the Cubs. Ball one on Rios, who went hitless in five trips in the opener. Cubs out, hit the Blue Jays last night, 8 7. It was those early four runs in the first two innings, and that's really all Gustavo Chassin and a couple of relievers needed. Rush with a 2 0, and Rios with an awkward looking swing to make it 2 and 1. Well, those are the kind of 2 and 0 swings that will drive a hitting coach crazy. Almost a check swing on a fastball up out of the zone. Three and one. Including the win last night. The Blue Jays are nine and six against left-handed starters this year. And the first two men have reached tonight on a single and now a walk. Take a look at the Cubs defensively behind Glenn and Rush. Hollinsworth in left field tonight. Patterson back in center. Burnett's in right. Ramirez, Perez, Walker, and Lee across the infield. Michael Barrett behind the plate for Glendon Rush. Five left-handed hitters in the lineup for Dusty Baker tonight. You see Glendon over his last three starts. Can't do much better than that. First pitch strike on Vernon Wells. Glendon Rush making his sixth career appearance against the Blue Jays. He's 3-1 and one with a 3.67 ERA, but he's only faced a couple of guys in this lineup. Shea Hillenbrand and Greg Zahn. So the Blue Jays teams he faced way back when were very different looking teams. Remember, Glendon was in the American League with the Kansas City Royals in the late 90s. Two and one on Wells. He had a couple of hits last night. In fact, after the game was credited with an infield single in the fifth inning that was originally called an error on Aramis Ramirez. A slicing drive down the right field line. Fair ball. And the Blue Jays will get on the board first as Johnson scores. Rios held it third. It's a double for Vernon Wells. So just like last night, the Blue Jays with an early run. They scored one in the first and three more in the second last night. Slicing double just inside that right field line. Well, we all know how quickly Glendon Rush likes to work. He likes to get the ball, jump back up on the rubber, and fire that next pitch in there. But when the other team's offense gets off to the kind of start that they have here tonight, it would behoove him to slow down just a little bit, try to take some of the momentum away from the Toronto hitters. He is not used to giving up first inning runs. It's the second first inning run he is allowed. In this, his seventh start. Pitch to Hillenbrand is fouled off. Second and third with nobody out. They're back up the middle. 
Ramirez in just a little bit at third, not even even with the bag though. And Derek Lee is back at first. One one is inside. And Hillenbrand one for one with a walk against Rush. That's an important pitch for Glendon Rush and all the Cubs pitchers for that matter against the Blue Jays. Establish that you will pitch inside. Boy, and Dan Iasogna, or Iasonia, excuse me, is just not giving Glendon anything on that outside corner. These Blue Jays hitters are very aggressive. They like to get out over that plate and drive the ball to the opposite field. If you do not come inside and keep them honest, it's going to be a long night. 3 1. Fouled away, and it's full. Do you assume when you're an American League team going to a National League park that you're going to see more fastballs because they say, you know, it's a fastball league here in the National League? I don't know if that holds true so much anymore. I mean, we've seen a lot of 2-0 breaking balls this year from the National League pitchers, and we've seen some of the American League pitchers uh, challenge in those hitters' counts. So yeah, I think there was a day, especially when you had two different umpiring crews for the American League and National League, that uh, you saw a real difference in the way pitchers approached hitters, but I think it's pretty homogenous right now. Here comes Glendon again, and he pops it up on the infield. So he'll get a big first out as Lee makes a catch. It'll bring up Aaron Hill, the rookie first or third baseman, who has. 15 RBIs in his first 17 big league games. Including one last night ended up being the game winner. It was the first inning RBI single. Here's the pitch. That caught the outside corner. He's filling in for the injured Corey Koski. Koski on the disabled list with a broken right thumb. Glennon quickly jumping ahead 0 and 2 here. He's got a couple pitches to play with now. Try to get Hill to chase something out of the strike zone. It's another one of those occasions where you wouldn't want to lose him 0 and 2, but a walk right here wouldn't be the worst thing to happen. Get Frank Menachino to the plate, who's hitting only 186 on the season, set up a potential inning ending double play. First three men reached. The latest Wells with an RBI double. And the one two on the ground with Rios heading home. Walker's going to throw to Lee. And it's an RBI ground out for Aaron Hill. The RBI machine. Give him 16 RBIs in his first 18 games. We saw it in the ball game last night, even though he only went one for four. Hill has a real good approach, stays inside. The ball just tries to hit it hard somewhere to the big part of the field. And if you do that with runners at third base, you're going to get your share of RBIs. So Wells now the runner at third. Two down in the inning and two runs in. Again, just off the outside corner. Now coming in, Glendon had allowed two runs in his last 28 innings pitched. He's allowed two here in the first inning tonight. 1-1 one, one to Menachino. High bouncer. Nafee with an easy play. And the Cubs will come up. Trailing early 2-0 to, to the Blue Jays. Even after the loss last night, the Cubs have still won nine of their last 11. They come in four games over 500. Let's check out their lineup. Navy Perez snapped a 14 game hitting streak at 422 during the streak, but it ended last night. Walker Lee Burnett's Ramirez, Corey Patterson with his first start of the series. Todd Hollinsworth has been playing a lot the last week against righties. And Barrett and Rush make up the Cubs battery. 
Blue Jays going the same way they did last night as Len said Johnson Wells and Rios across the outfield Hill McDonald Menachino and Hillenbrand across the infield Greg Zahn behind the plate for right hander Josh Towers five and four record on the season but as we mentioned has really struggled in his last three starts giving up 27 hits and 14 and two thirds innings 14 hits two starts ago against the Minnesota Twins the Toronto Blue Jays franchise record hit hard and foul by Napier two strikes on him hitting 319 left handed 318 right handed Towers with the 0 2. You know he's going to be around the plate. You mentioned the career high four walks in his last start. He hadn't walked more than one in his first 10 starts. Impeccable control. Bounced over him. Menachino knew he had to make a perfect play and could not. So Perez reaches on the infield single. A break for Navy Perez and the Cubs. I think Menachino had more time than he realized. This little chopper back over the mound looked like it might have been deflected by Towers, but Menachino tries to make the barehanded play. Probably had time to glove that ball and still get Navy at first base, but hey, you take your breaks where you can get them. And it brings up Todd Walker. One for one with a double against Josh Towers, the only other guy in the lineup. With previous at bats, Michael Barrett, 0 for 3 against Towers. For Towers, his first ever appearance against the Cubs. And a pitch is a strike. We saw Todd in the on deck circle, and then we saw him head toward the plate in the ninth inning. But then was called back as Jose Macias took the at bat. He didn't do a game ending 6 3 double play. Walker was told before the inning that he was going to pinch hit for Macias, but there was only one out of the inning. So Dusty wanted to save Walker, who was on deck. Left center, and it's Johnson to make the catch. So Walker said, I was so focused on the at bat that I didn't hear the guys screaming from the dugout when I was walking toward the plate. So just a bit of miscommunication. But of course, the Cubs were not expecting a double play ball, and they assumed that Walker would get it at bat with at least two outs. And here's Derek Lee. You know, Macias had swung the bat well in the ball game last night, had a couple of base hits, and hit another ball hard at second base before the game ending double play. So yeah, I think it was probably played the right way. Had he not hit into the double play, then Walker comes up there with the idea of trying to hit one out of the ballpark, and uh, unfortunately didn't get to it. One for three night last night for D. Lee. Runner at first with one out. And a quick throw over to first. Navy back in time. Mentioned Josh Towers' his last three starts. Three losses at 920 ERA. His previous four, 4-0 four oh with a 2-14. He was pitching extremely well, but then everything changed for some reason. He thinks he has suffered from overanalyzing everything. Looking back at his last start, maybe it's affected the next start. So now he's just trying to look ahead and not look back. There really not a lot of secrets with Josh Towers. He's a four-pitch guy, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, and needs to command all of his pitches, keep him out of the middle of the plate. Comes his 0-2, struck him out. So Derek Lee frozen on that pitch, two down. The Towers will do this. You see where Zahn is set up on the outside corner. He has to reach all the way back across the plate to catch that pitch. You know, Derek Lee looks back from his position in the batter's box and sees the catcher with his left arm fully extended out to the left and uh, assumes that ball is off the plate, but actually. Yeah, it was probably on the inside part there. The Towers will pitch inside. I mean, he's not overpowering with his velocity, but in order to establish 
that outside corner. He needs to push hitters off the plate from time to time. Well, make sure you check out the upcoming edition of Fine Line, <laughs> official Cubs Monthly Magazine, and there will be a profile on Cubs right fielder Jeremy Burnett reclining earlier today. Perez not running. Two balls, no strikes. Maybe, by the way, with four steals and five tries this year. Dusty would like his speed guys to be a bit more aggressive, in particular, Hairston and Patterson. Try to make some more things happen on the bases. There goes Perez his time, and the ball is pulled foul by Burnett's. It's funny how the base dealers, you know, when Vince Coleman's in town, you can usually tell. Vince Coleman, the base running instructor for the Cubs organization. And when Vince is in town, the guys are usually much more aggressive on the bases because they're talking about base dealing and they're talking about getting bigger leads and reading a pitcher's move. But you know, then the guy leaves town and it kind of slowly leaks out of their memory and pretty soon they're back in their passive ways again. It's the same thing I saw with the Dodgers in my playing days when Maury Wills used to come out to the ballpark to work with their bunters. Well, when Maury Wills was in town, you could be pretty sure that all their guys were going to try to bunt for a base hit at least once a game. But then Maury would leave town and go to some of the other affiliates to work with the minor league players, and gradually the bunt just kind of disappeared. <laughs> Son setting up inside, and that's right where Towers put it on the inside corner to strike out Burnett. He K's Lee and Burnett to end the inning. Cubs get a hit, no runs, and at the end of one, hey, we're going to have... A chat with Mike, the souvenir vendor, coming up here at Wrigley. It's two to nothing, Jays. Hey. Underway here in the second inning, Greg Zahn leading off for the Blue Jays against Glendon Rush. Toronto scoring two runs in the first inning. Two strikes on Zahn, who snapped an 0 for 13 last night with one for three with a walk. He's a switch hitter. I guess it was an 0-2. That's what the board said. It must have been 1-1. One one. Now 1-2. One and bounce foul over the Cubs dugout. Well, Mike, the souvenir vendor here hey. at Wrigley Field. Hey, Mike, how are you tonight? Okay, yourself? What's going on, Len? Just calling a ball game. There you go. There's nothing as I, <laughs> one of your predecessors said there's nothing like fun at the old ballpark. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So I think you and I have probably the best professions in the world other than the ball players. Yeah, we would agree for sure. What are you selling tonight, Hello, Mike? Oh, Stevie. What are you selling tonight, Mike? Oh, I got some claws and some fingers and mini bats and some beads. Oh, we had a liner over here. I think they're aiming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you don't have gloves in that uh, box right there. You could have made a play. There you go. It's a uh, self-defense. So what's been the most popular item lately? Ah, uh, the kitties love the, the the nice big red claws here that uh, I'm holding up and waving at you with. They uh, they tend to. It's just super popular item out here. Greg Zong grounds out to short, so it'll bring up John McDonald. So Mike, uh, weather tonight. I mean, it's warm, but. I guess if it were the daytime with the sun beating down and uh, the high humidity might be a little bit worse, but it's it's a very comfortable night. Yeah, it is. It, uh, we had a little dip in the temperature there. It looked like we were, I know we got rain on the south side, but we'll be okay. Let's hope that uh, we get some good weather this weekend for Boston. Could be a big series for us. See, Mike, you got to tell everybody you're around that you're on TV. You might end up with some more sales here because they're going to be on TV. There you go. I haven't closed the deal yet, so uh, let's see what we can do. Ah, here we go. Oh, there you go. There you go. What's that? You want a finger or you want a paw? You want a finger? No, I want you to do me, do me a favor. I want you to look up there at one. See the booth? Wait, see the guys waving? They're waving right to you. You're on TV, kid. Right, we're on TV now. <laughs> okay. Finger, sir. 
Okay, eight on that. There you go, handsome. <laughs> out of 20, I owe you two, uh, 12. Ten's a good thank you, sir. That's very generous. All right. Hey, guys, you even got me a tip here. You I got put, it. Work it, Mike. I have to Mike. put my barley and malt strained hop beverage fund. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the claws are ten, sir. Fly to right, and Brunitz is there to make the catch. Mike, hang around with us, will you? Will you? Okay, sounds we'll try good. to get you some more sales coming up. One, two, three, go to Blue Jays in the second. Ten, sir. Blue Jays, two Cubs, nothing. Cubs will bat here in the second inning. They got an infield hit from Nafi Perez to lead off the first, but no runs. And we're uh, kind of eavesdropping a little bit and chatting with Mike, the souvenir vendor. As he is uh, making his sales and making his rounds here at Wrigley Field. Aramis Ramirez leading off the second uh, against right-hander Josh Towers. First pitch is a strike. Excuse me, kid. We saw Mike uh, yeah. sell a couple of things at the end of the uh, top of this inning. Here's an 0-1 to Ramirez. Fly ball to center for Vernon Wells. Hey, Mike, I, I don't know if yeah. you're uh, you available right now, but uh, do you get to watch the game a whole lot? I know you're working. You're trying to, to sell as much as you can. Do you able, are you able to take a peek every once in a while? To be honest, if you want to hustle uh, a buck as a vendor, you don't get to catch much of the game. Uh, the only thing is when we get a good pitcher, and I like to get behind home plate and watch a couple pitches from the better pitchers in the league. I always found pitching to be the best, most interesting part of baseball. Now, Corey Patterson, are you getting some strange looks? Do people think you're talking to yourself right now? <laughs> Or that maybe you're with the CIA or something? <laughs> yeah, a, a few strange looks trying to figure out what the heck's going on, talking to myself. <laughs> Patterson bounces it to Hillenbrand. Yeah, souvenir man. Step on first. All right, Mike, give give somebody your best sales pitch here. Let's let's hear it. My best one, you better get your microphone down a little bit, your volume down, because okay. it's gonna I'm gonna blast them a little bit here. I'm down by home plate. My, you one of my it. favorite areas of the stadium. <laughs> yeah, souvenir man. Hey, I woke him up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, yourself. Hey, Mike. Any little kids around where you are right now? I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear what you said there, Len. Are there any little kids around where you're at right now? Uh, not at the mo. There's in the seats at some point in time. Why? What do you got? Yeah. Find a little kid, I'll buy him a claw. Oh, okay. We're going to pick one out. We're going to... Yeah, pick out a good-looking Cubby fan. How about that little girl right there in the fluorescent shirt to your left? To my left. Oh, now to your We're... right. <laughs> <laughs> my other left. The other left. Yeah, find a little kid around there. Give him a claw. Say it's on BB. Which one here? Let me get... To... Which guy? Uh, we got adults down in that aisle. So I'm gonna... <laughs> we'll find a kid I don't suppose a point. cute woman about uh, 30 years old would uh, suffice on that list. <laughs> no substitutions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, souvenir man. Here we go. I got one here. All right, we finally found a kid, right? There you go, sweetheart. Come here. That's for you. They said to tell you you're on TV right now. She doesn't believe you. <laughs> Get her sign on TV. There All right. Go. Here we go. We got a sign to go with it, guys. All right. Let's go, Hold Todd. Hold on a second, girls. <laughs> we'll be right back to Wrigley. All right. Thanks, sweetheart. Top of the order for the Blue Jays here in the third inning, two to nothing. We're just uh, finishing up with Mike, the souvenir vendor. And uh, Mike, since we've had you on, you 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 made some sales here. How many things have you sold? Uh, actually, I've uh, been hustling around a little bit different pattern today. I probably had a half dozen sales. Uh, it's it's fun. Night games can be a funny uh, sales pattern here. So. Do you follow the beer vendors around, and do you make more sales after they've had a beverage? Pardon me. I'm <laughs> Do you, do, you, do you follow the beer guys around and maybe make an extra sale if someone's had an extra beverage? <laughs> <laughs> Not going to answer that one, huh? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Mike, we appreciate the time, and uh, good luck tonight. We hope you sell a lot, okay? Okay, thanks, guys, and let's have a good season out here, and hope we, uh, everyone stays healthy. And... You got it, Mike. Take okay. care. Backhanded by Walker, and he throws out Johnson. As we start the third, it's two to nothing, Blue Jays. And it'll bring up Alex Rios, who walked and scored in the first inning. Glendon has settled down. Has retired seven in a row since the Vernon Wells RBI double in the first inning. Including six ground outs. Off the outside corner. And that one's inside. One is hit foul down the right field line. Full count on Rios. Vernon Wells is on deck. The wind and the pitch. And he walked him, so Rios has walked twice. Glendon Rush is one of those pitchers. Once he gets into a good rhythm, he wants to work quickly and get the ball, throw it over the plate. But so far in the early going this game, he's had trouble finding that rhythm. And that combined with the small strike zone of Dan Isonia behind the plate tonight. And Glendon, uncharacteristically, has already walked two guys in this ball game. Alec Alexis Rios both times. Wells with the RBI two base hit in the first inning. So he has three hits in this series. Clinton with his third career shutout, his last time out, that was at San Diego. A four hitter on Thursday. He did not allow a runner past second base. In tight. Good spot right there once again. That's a very important pitch against this Blue Jays team. Just to a man, they don't seem to like the ball inside very much. They like to get that pitch out over the plate or even on the outside corner, try to drive it the other way. Could be a double play ball, and Nafee able to make the play. Good play by Nafee. After it got away from Walker, and the Cubs able to get one out. And now two down in the inning. So that'll actually go 4 6. And a fielder's choice for Wells. Good presence of mind by Napy Perez to get the deflection off the glove of Todd Walker. Well, if he bangs that a little bit higher, they probably turn a double play, but Napy had to go down, scoop it off the dirt. Just a snow cone right there, kept his foot on the bag long enough to get the force play at second base, but not in time to get Wells, who runs very well for a big man. Dylan Brand looking for his first hit in this series. The pitch to him is a strike. He's been hit by nine pitches this year. Time for first in the American League. His teammate Reed Johnson has been plunked nine times. Lou Ford of the Twins also has been hit nine times. Tipped into the glove. Well, it's two and two. The uh, scoreboard operator is having a little trouble with Dan Iasonia's strike calls. Been a couple of close pitches, and he hasn't been very emphatic. And now Patterson is coming in, and he makes a catch. Four out number three. 
After two and a half from Wrigley tonight, game two of this three-game series, Blue Jays two, Cubs nothing. Celebrity bat kids, send your name, age, address, phone number. We'll get back to that in a second. As Michael Barrett with a home run. Lead off homer, and it's now two to one. That's his sixth home run of the year. So he takes Towers deep, and the Cubs are on the board. That's one way to attack a pitcher that throws a lot of strikes. Jump on the first pitch you see in the strike zone. Look like a slider that just hung there. Zambrano salutes that one as it sails out of the ballpark. And in the left field corner, Reed Johnson with a nice catch to retire Glendon Rush. A crazy start to the bottom of the third. Hey, it's great to have with us up here in the booth Sarah Wood and Heather Pryor. Barnes & Noble pleased to announce that it has partnered with the Cubs wives to publish Wrigley Field from A to Z. Let's get a look at that uh, that book Heather's holding up. And the children's book features hand-drawn illustrations created by the wives of the Cubs highlighting the attractions and allure of Wrigley Field. Sarah, Heather, thanks for stopping by, and this is for a great cause. Thank you. Tell us about the idea behind the book. Well, the Red Sox wives had done a couple of these, and uh, they were so successful, so we decided it was something that... Um, Wrigley Field and the fans would they would just absolutely love and it would sell well and raise a lot of money for a good cause. And each of us uh, illustrated a letter, so they've got signatures on them and and there's pages for autographs in the book and we're pretty proud of it. Yeah, it's great. It turned out great. There's Navy Perez, one out in the inning. And it is a, a Barnes and Noble exclusive. It'll be sold at uh, Barnes and Noble bookstores. So uh, make sure you check it out. And a portion of the proceeds from each book will benefit Cubs Care Fund of the. McCormick Tribune Foundation. I know uh, the Cubs' wives are very involved. Oh, yes. Cubs. Right. And we'll also be um, making appearances at locations, at Barnes & Noble locations throughout the city. So so we're really happy about that also. And uh, McCormick Foundation has been wonderful with us. They're, everything we raise, we're matching 50 cents on the dollar. So the capabilities of what we're able to raise are just unbelievable. So we've got some great ideas. and. Uh, doing a book cart for Children's Memorial and uh, doing a lot of literacy and reading programs, so we're, we're just thrilled about it. Well, the runner at first with one out for Todd Walker. All right, which letter did you do? <gasps> I, uh, did, I did P. P is for pitcher. Okay. <laughs> I did K, the sign for strikeout. My drawing looks nothing like Mark Pryor. <laughs> She Fine traced. <laughs> she no traced. tracing, no tracing. <laughs> she traced from a card. Sideburns. <laughs> Sideburns were authentic. Sideburns of calves were added for authenticity. <laughs> That's right. K is a sign for strikeout. Of course, carry wood done by Sarah. Let's find P here. Here it is. P is for the pitcher on the mound. Heather Pryor. Oh, that looks nothing like Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it looks a lot like him. <laughs> Well, we, outside on Walker. We were joking before the inning started. We're glad you ladies are working since your husbands aren't. Oh, yes. <laughs> someone's got to work in our house. I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so going to be in trouble later on tonight. Well, uh, we're glad to report yeah. that Mark has played catch the last couple of days, just really keeping the arm strength up and the Cubs seeing where the, uh, the elbow is. And in Kerry's case, he's going to throw a simulated game tomorrow. Yeah, Kerry, he's moving along great and Especially with the team doing so well, the last thing you want to do is be sitting around watching it from the bench. So he should be up in a few weeks, and he's definitely ready to go and feeling great. And I know all the teammates feel good about that as well. You know, the thing that kind of turned around a little yeah. bit. The offense is swinging the bats a little better. Everybody's uh, playing a little better. Yeah, and the Mark idea gets of, injured, and we all start playing well, better. Well, the <laughs> idea of having Mark and Kerry come back, uh, you know, that'll just be the cherry on the Sunday. Oh, we're excited. We're excited. It's going to be a fun summer. Well, thank you very much for having us. We appreciate it. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's three and one. You're gonna have to stay here because Michael hit the leadoff homer when you I came know. into the booth. Yes. Nafee running, so oh. and that's fouled away oh. down the left field line. The guys didn't help with any of these drawings, did they? This this was all the wives' this handiwork. Was, this right? was all of us. Yeah, they they contributed some signatures at the end, and um, they'll be around when we do the appearances to help us and do some signings and sell some books. But um, it was definitely all us on this one. Adam Borowski. That is for the friendly confines. 
Quick throw to first, and Nafee's back. Is M for Mike the vendor? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out what M is for. The mask that catchers wear, Stephanie Barrett. It should be H for hot, because it's very hot. It's very hot up here. Yo, Souvenir Man. There's Mike the vendor. <laughs> yeah, we had Mike on earlier. Oh. 3 2 at Napy running, and that one found back by Todd Walker as well. Well, off the topic of the book, how has it been for you guys dealing with your husbands being home, you know, somewhat when they're supposed to be at work? That's oh, got to be tough. It's never fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not not very fun, but they're um, happier when they're playing. Yes. Well, Marcus, I know Carrie is. Yes, definitely. So hopefully soon get some good reports. Another one fouled away by Walker. Michael Barrett with a leadoff homer here in the third inning, and the Cubs trail by just a run. Josh Towers struggling with his command as he walked Navy on four straight, and then went three and zero on Walker. And now it's three and two. And a quick throw to first. Well, we I guess just got an email from a fan who has purchased one of the books. Oh, thank you. Want to thank the Cubs oh, that's wives. Awesome. And um, for anyone that's watching the game that's not in the Chicagoland area, uh, the books can be purchased at BarnesandNoble.com. There's another walk. I mentioned Towers walked four his last time out, but a guy who normally doesn't walk many at all. And the Cubs had two on with one out with Derek Lee coming up. And 21 starts last year for the Blue Jays. Towers had 15 games where he walked nobody or one. So this is a, a very much a control pitcher that is struggling here this inning. Greg Zahn will come out and give his teammates some signs. Yeah, he's giving signs to the infielders to let them know where he's going to throw the ball should the Cubs attempt a double steal. With Derek Lee at the plate, you want that third baseman to stay back in a good defensive position, so chances are if the Cubs do try a double steal, the throw will go to second base and try to get Todd Walker. Going outside, four ball one on Derek Lee, and Zahn's going to go out and chat with his pitcher. So again, Barnes and Noble and uh, BarnesandNoble.com. If you want to purchase Wrigley Field from A to Z, a children's book by the Chicago Cubs wives. And Barnes and Noble, you see, BN.com is the website. So when are you, you going to come back and sing the uh, seventh inning stretch? Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be allowed. Yeah, definitely not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. That's another thing we could probably get the husbands to do, to contribute in some <laughs> small way here while they're on the disabled list. We should get those guys up here singing a duet. Oh, we're going to be in trouble tonight. Don't you know yeah. that, Bob? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> digging a ditch. <laughs> it's 2-0 and on Lee. Well, this inning, six strikes and ten balls thrown by Josh Towers. And one of the strikes was hit out of the ballpark by Michael Barrett. Now sometimes uh, you can scare a pitcher right out of the strike zone. If he feels he made a pretty good pitch and it got whacked out of the ballpark, uh, he'll scoot that ball out on the corners a little bit more. And so far, he scooted it right off the plate. A three and zero. Oh. Well, in this inning, Towers has played right into the Cubs' hands by walking the two guys in front of the best hitter in the National League. Taps it right in front of the plate. That is a fair ball, and Derek Lee thrown out. He went after a 3-0 pitch. And hit it right down into the ground and is thrown out by the catcher. That is the first 3-0 pitch that Derek Lee has swung out all season. See, he really was winding it up there a little more of a leg kick than usual and that ball just couldn't roll foul for him It checks up right there in that soft dirt in front of home plate 
thrown out at first base easily. That's uh, something you just don't see very often. As a matter of fact, we haven't seen it at all this year. Derek Lee swinging a 3 0 pitch. So, second and third first base is open with Burnett's at the plate. Took a called third strike to end the first inning. A single here could give the Cubs a lead. Hit hard on the ground foul, pass first. Well, we know your fans as well, and I'm sure it was fun to watch. And, uh, and Heather, I know you have a home in San Diego. Watch the Cubs go six and one on this last road trip. That was an unbelievable road trip. It was, it was, it was a great time. Everyone was happy, having, having fun winning, and it was great. The 0 1, now two strikes on Burnett's. And are you fans of this weather? It's a little, it's a little more humid than San Diego. <laughs> we left Chicago, it was 55, we come back, it's 90. <laughs> Jump right into the middle of summer here on this homestand. A long look by Towers now ready. And the 0-2 pitch is outside. Zahn's going to throw to third. Maybe back. That's an easy pickoff attempt for a catcher with a left-handed hitter at the plate. He's got a clean shot down there to third base. Yeah, Jeremy Burnett rarely hits the ball on the ground to the left side, so it was an easy pickoff attempt. Fortunately for Napier Perez, Zahn's throw was well to the infield side of the bag and high. Kick in the one two right back to the pitcher. Towers gobbles it up. And the inning is over. Barrett with the leadoff homer. Sarah Wood, Heather Pryor. We hope to see her husband's back on the field soon. Thank Best you. of luck with Wrigley from A to Z. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much for having well, The Blue Jays batting here in the fourth inning. It's 2-1 Toronto. Michael Barrett closing the gap by a run with a leadoff homer in the third. Hill, Menachino, and Zahn for the Blue Jays. Well, Glendon, a little trouble getting settled in tonight because he gave up a leadoff single and he walked the second batter of the game. And Vernon Wells doubled. Rush ended up allowing two runs in the first inning. Finger, eight. Three, two. And Burnett's coming in, and he is able to believe. Yep, he caught it. Just had to show the second base umpire, Tim Cheetah, that he had it. And he was able to make the catch before it hit turf. Nicely done. Battling the lights, battling that sinking line drive. He's able to get the glove underneath it and hold the ball up off the turf. Boy, that is a nice play right there by Jeremy Burnitz. When that humpback liner gets up into those lights, you have to do one of two things. You just have to wait till it comes out of the lights and hope you can pick it up quickly or try to get your body down low so that the ball yes, is above sir, the lights. Man. Listening to Mike the Vendor. Here tonight at Wrigley is Menachino fouls it away. I'm just going to add that Glendon, since that RBI double by Wells, has not allowed a hit since. Flared towards center field, and Nafee just unable to get there. It was a long run for Perez. And Menachino with a blue pit is first of the series. Let's check out tonight's Aflac trivia question. On this date, 1989, what Major League first occurred at Sky Dome? Now called the Rogers Center. I have an idea of the answer to this one. Might have something to do with the actual ballpark. I think I know the answer to this one. I was there. One of the more bizarre things I've ever seen on a baseball field.
Pitch to Greg Zahn is fouled back to the netting. Rush has thrown a lot of pitches tonight, 69, and not even through the fourth inning. Greg Zahn has talked about some of the pitching issues for the Blue Jays going into this series. Roy Halladay, of course, their ace. Sean seen to an extent, but everybody else has had some struggles, including, as we mentioned, Josh Towers lately. And Greg Zahn takes it very personally, feels a responsibility back there to help his pitchers. He says, even when a guy doesn't have his good stuff, it's my job to help him get through it. And I know you can relate to that idea. You try to do everything you can. We saw it in the ball game last night with Shasin. Didn't have a real good changeup in the early part of the ball game, but about the third inning, he started to get a much better feel for it. And we saw Zahn call for it a lot more, especially first pitch and in hitters counts. And the Cubs swung at a lot of those changeups that were just off the plate. Now you have to have a feel for the what the pitcher has working on a given night. Sometimes the pitcher himself is the last guy to realize uh, what his best pitch is on a given night and what's not working on a given night. Good fastball right on the outside corner at the knees. He recognize what he's got going for him and try to figure out how to attack the hitter's weaknesses with those pitches that are working at the same time continuing to try to incorporate the other pitches and eventually get those in working order so that you can attack the opposing team with all of your pitches. One strike on the shortstop McDonald is going to step out for an 0 1 pitch. And Aquino the runner at first and the Blue Jays leading 2 1. Look it's, it's Zon's not going to make any excuses and most catchers wouldn't. But he struggled a little bit at the plate lately and you know you have to think there's a correlation. You're doing what you can to help your pitching staff and it's physically demanding to catch and at some point that has to affect your offense. Well, you'd like to think it doesn't. You'd like to think you can separate the two but it's just human nature to take your offensive struggles behind the plate with you and vice versa. You know when the pitchers are struggling you don't feel like you've called a good game for your pitcher on a given night. Uh, you know sometimes that affects the way you swing the bat as well. Very dapper tonight. Rush will throw over to first. Manichino without a stolen base attempt this year. It's coming on, and he makes a catch to end the inning. Manichino with a one out single, but the Blue Jays failed to score. Cubs will bat here in the bottom of the fourth down, two to one. However, there was a short rain delay. Uh, I said it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. The roof started to close. They got a weather report that there was a storm coming. As Ramirez drills that one, and it's into the ivy, and it's not coming out, so it'll be a double. Man, did he smoke that one. That might have gone through the brick. <laughs> it's rolling out on Waveland Avenue. It went right through the wall. Well, Johnson digs it out, tosses it back into Tim Sheeta. He flips it up to the fans in the bleachers in the left field. Yeah, that was a heat-seeking laser right there off the bat of Aramis Ramirez. And in the last inning when Michael Barra went deep on a similar pitch Towers refused to throw another strike for a while. So see what happens here. This is a pretty sad story about Skydome The game started with the roof wide open. We got a report that a storm was coming. So they started to close the lid And it got almost completely closed before the storm started. However, there was a, a swath 
Bunted by Patterson. Good job. Tower is going to tag him out. It'll be a sacrifice for Corey. Time run 90 feet away with one out. There's a swap from the upper deck in yeah, kind of behind first base, down across the good seats, down behind the first base dugout, directly across home plate and directly up the other side, about 12 feet wide. It <laughs> rained and they had to stop the game for just a couple of minutes until the roof closed completely. It'll be Todd Hollandsworth, who's making his fourth start in the last week. He has hit his way back into the lineup five for his last 11, including an 0 for 1 tonight. Infield in for the Blue Jays. Strike one. Tom got a start against. Derek Lowe last Wednesday. And he went two for three with an RBI, an intentional walk, and a stolen base. And that earned him some more playing time. Going to knock in a run here. And a good play by the shortstop, McDonald, to throw him out. But Ramirez scores, and it's 2 2. Hollinsworth with the RBI ground out. A great base running that time by Aramis Ramirez got a remarkable jump off a of third base was going on contact As soon as McDonald dives for the ball. There's no play at the plate Good heads up base running by Aramis Ramirez. He was told before the play by Chris Spire You're gonna go on contact got a great jump and scored easily Strike on Michael Parrott and a home run to lead off the third inning Over to his left is Aaron Hill. And the Cubs are done in the fourth, but they tie it up. The double by Ramirez to lead it off. Sack bunt moves him over. Hollinsworth knocks him in with a ground out. It's 2 2. Lately, winners of nine of their last 11. And they have caught the Blue Jays here tonight. It's 2 2. Toronto with two runs in the first, but single tallies in the third and the fourth for the Cubs. And it's a tie game here in the fifth. Josh Towers 0 for 1 tonight, 0 for 5 in his big league career. And on the hands, and he fought it off. Two quick strikes. Outside, 1 and 2. Struck him out swinging. First day of the June draft today, and the Cubs with the 20th overall pick, selecting left-hander Mark Pollock with the 20th pick from Springville High in Utah. How about this? 10 and 0 did not allow an earned run all year. His senior year struck out 132 in 63 wow. in a third innings. Got a quick story to tell you as well. As Reed Johnson takes the ball, well, we have a picture. Of there's you saw in the graphic of Pollock. Mark Stencil on our crew was uh, searching the internet for a picture, found his high school graduation photo. So you got the the photo and then they doctored it up, put the cap and the Cubs jersey on him. Nicely done. There it is. Nicely done by Mark Stencil. It looks like he posed for that picture in spring training with the rest of the ball club. 36 and 2 over his four year high school career. 476 career strikeouts. All time record for the state of Utah. And he's the first Utah high schooler to be drafted in the first round. As Burnitz gives chase toward the line, he'll slide. It's a fair ball, and it gets by him. Johnson on his way to third. It's going to be a triple for Reed Johnson. So he continues to beat up the Cubs, his second hit tonight.
and how much else Bernitz could do down in that right field corner. We know that foul line is right up against the wall. Another slicing hit down that right field line. Bernie slides in there feet first to protect himself as he hit the wall. And once that ball ricochets past Bernitz, returns on the afterburners and ends up at third base with a one-out triple. Corner man in. Double play combos back. Runner at third, one out. So the Cubs will give up a run. I need to get up the middle. Doesn't get to the pitcher. I was going to mention Pollock, the first Utah high schooler to be drafted in the first round since lefty Bruce Hurst was taken by the Red Sox in 1976. And shortly after he was drafted, he signed. Well, you love getting your first round pick signed, and to do it on the same day of the draft is pretty amazing. He's obviously not a Scott Boris guy. Actually, I think he is. Is he really? Believe it or not. I'll be darned. What I heard. Maybe backpedaling. Patterson with a catch, and they're going to hold Johnson. Now he's going to try to score as it's air mailed over Barrett. Boy, that hurts. Johnson was not even going to attempt to score, but then the throw got over everybody. So it will be a sack fly for Rios. It's a shame for Glendon Rush. He gets a desired result, a shallow fly ball. Corey just throws an off-balance hand grenade into the backstop here. Glendon Rush can't even catch that ball. Hey, you're right. Johnson wasn't going to try to score. He had tagged up and was watching the play. If Nafi Perez had caught that ball backpedaling, he may have attempted to score, but once the outfielders called off Nafi, he was going to hold at third base all the way. Well, they've taken away the sacrifice. Just going to say it. Johnson was not going to try to score. It's going to be an error on Patterson allowing that run to score. So the Blue Jays lead once again. It's three to two. And Wells gets the walk. Comes Larry Rothschild. This could be one of those meetings for Larry Rothschild just to reassure Glendon Rush that he's got good stuff. He's making good pitches. Some borderline calls have not gone his way, and certainly that last play defensively did not help the Cubs' starting pitcher, but. Get him back in the strike zone here. Get him back into a good rhythm. Change the way you experience television with Sony's high definition TV. Available at your local Sears store. tonight driven the other way by Hillenbrand but Bernitz is there to make the catch so the Blue Jays get an unearned run on a wild throw from Corey Patterson toward the plate it's now 3-2 Wide in the left field corner and a nice running catch by Reed Johnson in the third inning. Reed Johnson's been big in this series for the Blue Jays. He hit three home runs, including a walk-off home run against the Cubs at Sky Dome a couple of years ago in interleague play. Hit a three-run homer last night. And he has scored twice with two hits. And Hillenbrand able to get it to Towers. To retire Glendon Rush. So to bring up Nafi Perez, an infield single and a walk. Reed Johnson probably hoping the Blue Jays play the Cubs next year in interleague play. 
And there's no way to explain why one guy has success against another team, especially in interleague play. Uh, you don't see these guys very often, maybe on TV once in a while, a little bit on videotape, maybe a scouting report here and there, but for whatever reason, Reed Johnson has come in here and turned this into his personal playground. Josh Towers is from Port Wyneme, California. How do you spell Wyneme, you ask? H U E N E M E. Punted by Nafee, but Towers got off the mound in a hurry. And he'll throw him out. Well, we were talking earlier how long and lean Towers looks out there on the mound. He's got the pants hiked up high, makes his legs look even skinnier than they already are. But he bounces off that mound well. He's a good athlete. He's very quick. You see him getting over there in good position. Plenty of time to throw on for the out. Also wearing that single digit number. The only pitcher in Blue Jays history to wear a single digit number. There have been position players who pitched in blowout ball games who were single digit players, but the first pitcher. As Reed Johnson drifting, and he can't make the catch. Todd Walker in the second. We're just singing the praises of Reed Johnson. I don't know if the wind just took that ball and fooled him a little bit, but Todd Walker ends up with a double. I think unfamiliarity with the ballpark. You'll see him take his eyes off of him to see how close he is to that wall. And when he looks back up to pick up the flight of the ball, he is uh, not close. Right there, he lost it momentarily. The ball's back over his head. He tries to jump up and make a catch, but drops safely for a double for Todd Walker. For the wind helping the home team. And it's Derek Lee. All right, if you're the opposing manager, and again, keeping in mind that the Blue Jays have not seen Derek Lee like we have, but would you pitch to him in this spot? First base open and a left handed hitter on deck. Well, based on what I've seen the last two days, I think I would. I mean, you look at those numbers, and uh, certainly Derek Lee could scare you into a, an intentional walk right here. But, you know, based on what you've seen with your own eyes the last two days, I got to believe John Gibbons feels that Josh Towers has something for Derek Lee. If he hits his spot, stays out of the middle of the plate, he can get him out. I don't think they're going to come right down the heart of the play with a fastball here anytime soon. And that's probably why they won't. <laughs> this is his kind of night. He can get one in the air. I mean, we ask the question all the time, why do people pitch to Derek Lee? But I think there have been a lot of circumstances in which we could understand why you would. Fouled off, and it's two and two. And it goes back to what we talked about the other day. He's going to make outs. And you know, every once in a while, you place a little 0 for 4 or 1 for 3, and he looks human. And teams think they can pitch to him. And then they pitch to him, and he goes 5 for 5 with two bombs. You know, it's just uh, it's kind of the, way, the yin and yang of this game, the, the pendulum swinging back and forth. One day he looks extremely good at the plate. Other days uh, he looks susceptible. So then you're tempted to go after him. Blue Jays made the right choice as Hill throws him out and Derek tonight he is 0 for 3. We'll head to the sixth from Wrigley. Blue Jays 3, Cubs 2. In Glenview, Illinois. One hopper to Todd Walker. And Aaron Hill is thrown out. Three two Blue Jays this half inning of Cubs baseball brought to you by Robert Morris College real college for the real world. Blue Jays have been tough in this series haven't they Four won the final last night and they lead three two tonight and they have their ace. For the elite pitchers in the American League Roy Halladay tomorrow. Sergio Mitre will get the start for the Cubs. Dusty was asked about John Caranca's next start. At this point, 
in the Cubs notes he is listed starting Sunday night against Tim Wakefield of the Red Sox. But Dusty indicated today it may be Glendon Rush instead. The Cubs have an off day on Thursday after this series so they could move Glendon up and he would have normal rest if they wanted to use him Sunday night. A lot of that's probably dependent on how many pitches Glendon Rush throws in the ball game tonight how far Dusty wants to extend him into this game. Patterson with the catch so Benakino lines out. Hundred and two pitches in the game up to this point for Glendon Rush with one out to go still here in the top of the sixth inning. Now those off days during the course of the season uh, you, whenever possible uh, you'd like to give your starters the extra days rest if at all possible. Now, depending on who's filling in that spot in the rotation sometimes uh, you would rather bring, bring a guy back and not give him the extra days rest but uh, I'm sure Dusty at this point in the season would love to give Glendon that extra day if at all possible. High fly left center Hollinsworth makes a catch. So one, two, three, sixth inning for Glendon Rush. The Cubs are down one tonight. It's Toronto three, Cubs two. After the game, stick around for Cubs post game live presented by Joe's Crab Shack. Get highlights of all the action, analysis from Dan Plesak, plus hear what Dusty has to say during his post game news conference. It's Cubs post game live immediately following the game here on Comcast Sportsnet. Cubs are down a run. It's 3 2. Blue Jays got an unearned run in the fifth inning to take the lead once again. Now he's not real comfortable, so we'll try this again. Had an itch, had to scratch his face there before he delivered the next pitch. And. Uh, between innings, a cat got onto the field and then ended up racing through the stands to get out of here. Good leap. And get out of the way. <laughs> well, I've heard uh, Frank Catalanato refer to as the cat. He hasn't played yet in this series for the Blue Jays, but uh, we literally had a cat on the field. Big cat, right? Andres Galarraga. I'm trying to think, was it Robert Fick we were talking about who uh, adopted a stray from uh, Shea Stadium once? Uh, maybe somebody should call him, see if he's interested. I'm not sure where that cat ended up. He went ripping through the lower bowl. You could tell where he was by the people jumping out of the way and then uh, made his way down one of the aisles and uh, then I lost track. Walker, a right hander, is up for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Robert Fick adopted a cat from Shea Stadium and named it Shea. So, <laughs> you sure it was a cat? <laughs> That's all I read. They have some big varmints <laughs> in that ballpark, I'll tell you that. Fouled off by Burnett, still three and two. The old Astrodome in Houston, they used to encourage some of the employees to bring their cats to work to help eliminate some of the rodent problems in that place. Take your cat to work there. And you know, they boast about everything being bigger in Texas. I can attest to the fact that the rodents are. There's a ninth pitch to Burnett's. And he is able to stay alive. Zahn thought he, thought he held out of the foul tip, but he caught dirt. Yeah, Zahn not arguing too much. We'll get one more look at it. The pitch is down to begin with. It looked like the ball hit dirt. A lot of dust flying. I think that's what sold it more than anything else. Iasonia looking down there, sees all that dirt flying, and Assumes that ball hit in the dirt, and it probably did. 
Good at bat. Make it a great at bat. Another payoff pitch struck him out. Inside corner. It's the third strikeout for Towers. He has Kate Burnett's twice, and all three strikeouts have been of the looking variety. And the same location of uh, Jeremy Burnett's struck out looking back in the first inning on a fastball inside. Not quite a comebacker to the extent that Greg Maddox throws, but a little bit of a two seam sinker that he started just off the inside corner and tailed it back over the plate. And the Derek Lee strikeout looking in the first inning was on the inside part of the plate. Elmeyer well, continuing to get loose. Ramirez lined a double into the Ivy for the fourth inning. The score would, at the time was a tying run and a Todd Hollinsworth ground out. But the Blue Jays got to run back in the fifth to take the 3 2 lead. So I'm moving out. And right center, and this one will get down for Ramirez, who's on his way to second again, his second consecutive double. He has 15 two base hits on the year. Now seven for his last 15, and over his last 12 games, there's 21 hits. Well, you can see where Zahn was set up, way out off the outside corner. That pitch straight back over the heart of the plate, and Ramirez, another screaming line drive, this time into the gap in right center. John Gibbons is out, and he's going to make a double switch. Well, the Cubs have five hits tonight. And four have been for extra bases. A home run and three doubles. That'll be right hander Pete Walker. A forward call to the pen. 3 2 Blue Jays. Cubs with the tying run and scoring position. We'll be back. Double switch. Orlando Hudson comes in. He'll play second base. And he'll bat nine. And right hander. Pete Walker will take over on the mound with Corey Patterson coming up. Runner at second with one out. Walker's been real good out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays over his last five games. 14 and a third innings of work has not allowed a run. He has spent parts of five seasons in the National League. But this is his first trip to Wrigley. And here he comes to Patterson in tight. Walker spent last year in Japan. Side. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, Walker basically a sinker slider pitcher. Corey's seen both of them already. Missed with the sinker, missed with the slider. You see the ball up. Two and one. Email from Brian Johnson from East Peoria. As my wife and I are in attendance tonight, I don't know if you guys could wish my beautiful wife Crystal a happy first, all caps, anniversary. Yeah, the first one you got to make sure that you go all out. So happy anniversary to the Johnsons, Brian and Crystal. Congratulations, Brian. Center cut off by Hudson. Safe at first. Patterson beats it out. Hudson with a good play just to get to it. But an infield hit as Corey using his speed there. Hudson just came into the game. First and third. 
I don't know if there's anybody else in the lineup tonight that beats this out. This is a nice play by Hudson. The backhand gets a strong throw off balance. It's just the speed of Corey Patterson allowed him to beat it out at first base. Yeah, Brian Johnson can get his wife to come to Wrigley Field on their anniversary. That's uh, that's nice going, Brian. So we'll see how the Blue Jays set up their infield. Double play depth up the middle. Dylan Brand holding Patterson on and Hill now backing up a few steps at third. With the runner at first base, there's always a, a hole on the right side of the infield for a left-handed pull hitter, but with Hudson cheating closer to the bag at second base, he's now moved over a little bit, even a larger hole than normal on the right side of that infield. Tying run, 90 feet away once again for Hollinsworth, who knocked in Ramirez in the fourth inning. With a ground out. Remember the double play ball he beat out the other day in San Diego. Kept an inning alive. It was on Sunday setting up Corey Patterson RBI double in the fourth inning. The 0 1. That's a strike. And a big pitch for Walker. And now it's. Nothing in two on Holly. Always have to be aware on that 0-2 count if you're the runner at third base for a ball in the dirt. Sometimes a pitcher will elect to waste a pitch in this situation, throw a breaking ball in the dirt, throw a change up in the dirt. Good chance it'll get away from the catcher. Girl fake to third, fake to first. Spire with the signs. Ramirez, the runner at third. Patterson over at first. Cubs trailing by a run here in the sixth inning. Patterson not running. Looked like he was thinking about it. Out hitting the Blue Jays again tonight. Like they did last night, but they're trailing once again. Walker paying a lot of attention to Corey Patterson over there at first base. This is a good run count, one and two. Always a danger of a possible pitch out, but usually on a one two count, you're going to get some kind of a breaking ball, something out of the strike zone. Tough pitch for the catcher to handle. Harlandsworth to right field, and it looks like it's deep enough. Rios with the catch. Ramirez will score, and it's tied 3 3. Hollinsworth getting it done again. Two game tying RBIs tonight. Rios with a real strong throwing arm out there in right field, but that ball drove him back deep enough that Ramirez scores easily. Now look for Corey Patterson to run. First or second pitch here in this sequence to Michael Bear, try to get himself in the scoring position. Jose Macias has already come out into the on deck circle, so if he does steal second base, the Blue Jays will probably pitch to Michael Barrett, knowing there's another hitter coming up after him. If the pitcher was coming up after Michael Barrett and Corey Patterson stole a base, you'd probably see the intentional walk to get the pitcher to the plate.
run charge to the starter towers. Cubs have not yet led in this series. Hit hard and past Hudson. Patterson will move to third. Corey faked his steal. He took about a step and a half towards second. And that got Hudson to go toward the bag. And then when Barrett hit that hot shot, he hit it behind Hudson. Like an undercover hit and run here. You see Corey Patterson with the false start at first base. That draws Hudson to the bag. And Michael Barrett hits the ball back to his left into center field. I'm surprised to see Hudson commit to second base as late as he did. It was Corey had already stopped in his break to second base, but Hudson was breaking the second base to cover anyway. Michael was able to get the ball by him. So to see his pinch hitting. Fort Lendon Rush. And Lendon Rush with a quality start tonight. Six innings, three runs, two were earned. That streak uh, intact for Glendon. He has not allowed more than two earned runs in any of his starts this year. He's made seven starts. Well, in a lot of ways, a start like tonight is a is a real mark of the kind of pitcher that Glendon Rush is. When you go out there and you don't have your best stuff, you have trouble getting into a rhythm. You have a home plate umpire that's not giving you borderline pitches, but yet you're able to battle through six innings and only give up two earned runs. That's a pretty solid outing. Hudson moving to his left, and he'll throw out Macias. The Cubs tie it. Hollinsworth with two big RBIs tonight. And it's 3-3 after 6. We head to the 7th inning. We saw a cat on the field earlier and may have uh, reminded some Cubs fans of 1969. A little flashback. Yeah, Shea Stadium. The black cat on the field. And uh, maybe the cat tonight reversing the 69 curse. We don't know where he ended up, but you see the fans <laughs> scattering. <laughs> yeah, maybe a distant relative of the black cat at Shea came back to get us off the hook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ronnie took a couple swings at that black cat, I'll bet. Well, it's Todd Wellemeyer in relief of Glendon Rush facing John McDonald. Well, he has been terrific. Since coming back from Triple A Iowa in early May, well, recently with two strike counts, we've seen Todd Wellemeyer go to that overpowering fastball, 95, 96 miles an hour, elevated out over the plate. He's gotten a lot of swinging strikes on that pitch. He's allowed one run in nine appearances since being recalled on May 3rd. Walker to lead. One out here in the seventh. Hey, coming up Friday, the first 20,000 fans will receive a scratch and win card. 100 random winners will be taking home a majestic 2005 Nomar home jersey compliments of MVNA. Fans are encouraged to hold on to their cards for second chance drawings throughout the game. For complete rules, visit Cubs.com. Orlando Hudson with his first at bat tonight. He went 0 for 1 to the ninth inning at bat last night.
Hunts in a switch hitter. Going with the uh, the double ear flap. Makes it a little bit easier, I guess, on the uh, equipment crew for the Blue Jays. We need one batting helmet. One of the greatest switch hitters in recent history, anyway. Willie McGee used to wear the double flap just because it was easier than packing two helmets. And when they happened to change pitchers while he was in the on deck circle, he didn't have to go back and get the other one. Walker again. Going out his counterpart, Orlando Hudson. Charlie Weiss, the head football coach at Notre Dame, coming up would take me out to the ball game. There's that guy again, Reed Johnson. Two hits tonight, two runs. Had a three-run homer last night. You know, normally when a guy's as comfortable as Reed Johnson appears to be at the plate here at Wrigley Field, I would suggest running one right up underneath his chin just to get him a little loose in that batter's box, but I don't think it would bother him at all. And Johnson's one of those guys that uh, he'll, he'll get on base any way he can. If you want to throw one up and in, he's liable to lean into it and take his base. Very aggressive hitter leaning out over that plate. Wallemeyer with a 1 1 bunted by Johnson, but foul. Struck him out. Seventh inning stretch time. The ball game is Notre Dame head football coach Charlie Wise. Comes batting here in the seventh inning. Top of the order. Navy Perez against Pete Walker. It's 3 3. Charlie Wise said football coach at Notre Dame in the booth with us and owner of, well, right now three Super Bowl rings, but we'll be getting his fourth this weekend. The Patriots winning their third Super Bowl in four years, and that one is pulled foul by Navy. We were talking during the break that uh, your college days at Notre Dame, you, you said you spent a lot of time as a bleacher bum, correct? Yeah, it was, a lot, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We used to make trips in here, especially on weekends. For, you know, it was all day games, and go get, go get seats out in the bleachers and have a grand all time. One and one on Perez. Make it two and one. Well, congratulations on another Super Bowl win, and uh, you probably had the busiest winner of anyone in sports so congratulations as well and uh, taking over at Notre Dame well thanks that ball hit very well straight away center but Wells able to run it down yeah but there's only so many hours in a day you know <laughs> I was working both jobs but there, you know, there's only so many hours you can work so you're just gonna had to kind of split it up between the two jobs and you know give them do due diligence to both jobs and you know, try not to screw it up and I think we did we came out of it okay <laughs> Yeah, I'd say so. Bob and I were talking before the game. We don't believe the Patriots really get their due. And you talk about parity in the NFL, and it's not built for dynasties, but the Patriots have been that. Well, here's the deal with the Patriots. It's different. In, in today's age of professional sports, I think it's probably the mecca of players suppressing their egos and playing for the team rather than for the individual. I really don't think that exists very many places anymore. I think it's truly a role model and it's great for kids even to look at because they're there are a bunch of suppressed egos by the coaching staff and the players and all they do is worry about winning. One and one on Todd Walker. BB how about that ring. Wow. Pretty impressive huh. Yeah. Get a look at it here. Yeah, the good thing is uh, Tommy Brady emailed me the other day and said uh, the owner promises him that the one we're getting Sunday is bigger. Wow. So sign me up. Looks like a rodeo belt buckle. Hey, it's my number one recruiting tool, <laughs> recruiting tool there, Bob. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, those high school kids take a look at that, and they all want to play on Sundays, and trust me, I use it. Scott Scott Weiss. 
three one on the way to Walker and he pops it up shallow left and Johnson under it to make the catch well let's talk about your Notre Dame uh, team and um, you know you talked about trying to juggle things during the uh, the playoffs uh, are you feeling settled in and uh, looking ahead now to the upcoming season yeah I'm, actually I'm looking forward to getting to July and taking a couple of weeks off with my family to re recharge because I think you know as a coach any coach will tell you you need to reload yourself too and I think that you know by the time July is over and August rolls around I think you know I think we'll be ready to go I have to tell you Charlie it was a special moment after uh, the Diamondbacks won the World Series in 2001 we went to South Bend to play against our Class A affiliate team there and had the opportunity to visit campus and go to the Golden Dome I mean it was uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, I'd never been there before, and uh, geez, it sends chills up and down your yeah, spine. Yeah, it's a special place, but that, you know, I got to get people believing it's a special place again. That's the, that's the problem, and I think that's that's what part of our mission right now is getting it back to where it was, you know, a decade ago. One one to Lee is inside. Well, he brings such great credentials into the job, and. Uh, you know, what do you take from the NFL now back to the uh, collegiate ranks? Well, I try to rob a little bit from Parcells and rob a little bit from Belichick and try to use the best of both of their you know, personas and tweak it with your own personality. You know, there's no sense reinventing the wheel. I mean, those guys have won a lot of championships. So try to do what they did and just use, you know, apply your own personality because players can see through you if you're fake. You, you got to be real. Hitters count here for Lee, the 3-1. He bounced it foul. So you open at Pittsburgh, right? And then yes, sir. to Ann Arbor. How well, about that start at Michigan? But it's always tough for Notre Dame. <laughs> by, 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 by the way, you have a day game in Pittsburgh that, that night we play Pittsburgh. So oh, I just figured oh. I'd give you a little heads up. And Lee stays alive. Yeah, that'd be all right. A nice double header. Yeah, your manager's already hit, already hit me for tickets. So. <laughs> he met me today about five minutes into the conversation. We were negotiating for tickets already. <laughs> Maybe he can help you out here and yeah. you can help him out there. <laughs> Driven into center. It kind of well, so he laid with his first hit tonight. Comes with two outs here in the seventh. And now Jeremy Burnett. Can you talk a little bit about Tom Brady and when you first started working with him and, and the quarterback he has become? Well, the first year we got him, we kind of sort of like redshirted him in the NFL terms. You know, we just put him in the weight room and. You know, he had a 30 pounds his, his rookie year. And by the second year, he had kind of put himself in a position to, to compete. And he fought his way up to number two behind Bledsoe. And then you know, Bledsoe went down. Reed Johnson traps it. And it's a hit for Burnett. And to be honest, Johnson's lucky he didn't get by him. The Cubs would have been able to take the lead had it gotten past him. First and second. Sticking line drive by Jeremy Burnitz to left field. You'll see Johnson come in here and short hop this ball off the grass. Very obvious, even with the naked eye at first look at third base umpire Ron Culpa right out there getting a good look at it. And more importantly, brings Aramis Ramirez to the plate, the Cubs' hottest hitter in the ball game tonight. Two doubles, two runs for Aramis, first and second. And again, the Cubs have not yet led in this series. And Walker steps off the rubber. Strikes. 
visiting with Charlie Weiss, the new head football coach at Notre Dame. Michael Wirtz is up in the Cubs bullpen. Back to back, two out singles for the Cubs. particular Wrigley memory that stands out or just uh... no we just like you said we would always get a whole group of guys and get one get a bunch of car loads and go try to make sure we we're sitting out there in left center and try to get some baseballs and yeah, I can't remember any time I might not remember any of the scores at the end of the game <laughs> <laughs> okay but I can tell you we had a, we had a great time at the game well, fans want to see the Cubs take the lead here in the seventh tonight Walker trying to get it out any way he can without delivering another pitch to Aramis Ramirez. Great hitters count here at 2 0. Oh. When did they start putting those things up on those seats on the top of those roofs? Well, they've been there the last few years, and uh, Cubs and the owners of those buildings have uh, come together on an agreement. That's a great idea. It's a great atmosphere here at Wrigley. Reminds me of the monster seats at Fenway. Well, the rooftops have always been popular here, and the fans are on their feet. It's 3 0. Now 3 and 1. is loaded. So Patterson will come up with a bases full. This all started with two outs. And John Gibbons is going to come out. Looks like he's going to make yet another double switch. It's like Frank Catalanato. For Reed Johnson to make the final out at the top of the seven. And I believe Scott Sean Weiss, the lefty, is going to come in and face Corey Patterson. Base is loaded, two outs. Four call of the pen time. 3 3 here on the seventh, and we'll be back. Catalanato, the new left fielder. And the new pitcher is left hander Scott Schoenweiss. Base is loaded for the Cubs. Two outs, seventh inning in a 3 3 game. Corey Patterson, the hitter. Here comes Schoenweiss, fouled back on a fastball at 94. More velocity than we're used to seeing from Schoen Weiss in his days with the Angels. He was more of a finesse pitcher, so tried to sink the ball, throw change ups. They're not blowing heat there. First pitch to Corey Patterson. The 0 1 weekly hit on the ground. Schoen Weiss off the mound, and he would throw him out as the Cubs leave it loaded. Charlie Weiss said, Football coach at Notre Dame, thanks for stopping by, and best of luck with the Irish. All right, thank you very much. To the eighth inning, 3 3 from Wrigley. Skiles signed to a new multi-year contract. 3-3 here in the eighth inning. And a swing and a miss by Alex Rios. As Todd Wellemeyer is in his second inning of work. He went 1-2-3 in the seventh. Have tied it a couple of times tonight and have yet to take the lead. Wellemeyer will try to keep the Blue Jays right at three. A 
Well, Wellemeyer showing a lot of feel tonight. A couple of change-ups here. The first pitch in the sequence to Rios, and that pitch right there. Of course, his change-up is 86 miles an hour. That's just about a major league average fastball. When your fastball is 95 or 96, an 86 mile an hour changeup is very effective. Outside, three and two. Swinging with the changeup. With one out, it'll bring up Vernon Wells. This has been a great pitch for Wellemeyer's last couple of outings. As I mentioned before, when you can throw your fastball 95 or 96 miles an hour, those hitters have to respect that velocity. Start that bat just a little bit sooner. You can throw anything off speed in the strike zone. You're going to get a lot of swings and misses. I'd like to welcome all of our viewers watching on Green County Cable in Williamsville, Illinois tonight. Happy 13th birthday to a Cubs fan, Tyler Page. Las we go. High drive, left center field, Hollinsworth warning track. Leaps can't make the catch. And on his way to third is Vernon Wells at throw. Beats him. And Brian Butterfield can't believe it. The third base coach, John Gibbons, is going to come sprinting out. And a huge call as the Cubs able to erase Wells at third. Hollinsworth does everything he can to climb the vines and try to make the play and Corey with a great throw this time Just inside the base to Aramis Ramirez the quick sweep tag gets him on the thigh And the home plate umpire Dan Iasonia Rotating around as the umpires do on the ball sit to the outfield gap is the man there right on top of the play to make the call Believe Gibbons has been thrown out It looked like Brian Butterfield and John Gibbons were arguing that the tag was high. That doesn't always mean the guy's safe. It looked like Ramirez got that tag high on the thigh of Vernon Wells, but before the foot got on the bag. One more look here. Wells trying to slide to the outside of the base, and Ramirez comes back with the slap tag. Very close, obviously a very close play, but it looks like Ramirez got the tag on him just before the foot hit the base. Well, John Gibbons still in the dugout. We heard a big roar of the crowd, and he was arguing with the umpire, but he is still in the dugout. So it appears no ejection. To Corey with a bad throw in the fifth inning. Allowing Johnson to score, but a huge throw to nail Wells at third. Boy, what a big out. You're looking at a runner in third with one out in the inning. Shea Hill and Brand Aaron Hill, two of their better RBI hitters in the lineup, coming up to the plate. Cubs would be forced to bring their infield in. Great throw by Corey Patterson. A great tag by Aramis Ramirez at third base. Takes that right out of the equation. Will Omen up for the Cubs. to deep left Hollinsworth gives chase and Hillenbrand with a double
10th double of the season for Shea Hillenbrand. That ball down. He can really go down and scoop it. Boy, how big was that play at third base now? Ooh. Willemar still has his work cut out for him here. Aaron Hill has been a thorn in the side of Cubs pitching in this series and in a lot of in the side of a lot of pitchers this season. He's hit a lot of balls to the right side of the field with authority. Hard grounders at second base, hard fly balls to right field. Now Aaron Hill, the third baseman. Runner at second with two outs, a couple of doubles in the inning. But Wells was thrown out, trying to stretch his double into a triple. has joined Ullman. On one base hit. And Hillenbrand is going to score. So it's 4-3. Talked about how Aaron Hill hasn't missed on too many RBI chances. Not in this series. He has three RBIs and he gives the Blue Jays the lead once again. We're staying up the middle of the field, trying to hit the ball between shortstop and second base. Not a lot of secrets to Hill's game. That's all he tries to do stay inside the ball, hit it to the big part of the park, and he's found holes in this series with runners in scoring position. Ford called to the pen. Will Ullman coming on. Four, three Blue Jays here in the eighth, and we'll be back. Lefty against lefty, Will Oman on to face Frank Catalanato with his first at bat in this series. Aaron Hill is the runner at first. He just knocked in Shea Hillenbrand with the go-ahead run. Catalanato on the season 129 at bats against right handed pitching only three against left handed pitching. Will Oman has been known to engage in a little tomfoolery in the uh, Cubs clubhouse but he is all business when he gets on the mound. He has an intimidating presence. Has gone right after left handed hitters this year. He's pitched in some big spots. Almond is allowed a 240 average against the lefties. Six for 25 against him. He's going to throw over the first short lead over there by Hill. Yeah, Hill has not attempted a stolen base this season. However, this might be a time to try for your first. You have a hitter at the plate who's only had three at bats against left handed pitching against a tough lefty. Yeah, even if Hill gets thrown out on the bases, you might see a right handed reliever in the next half inning. And Lenato would have a much better chance. Comes a 2 2, and it's bounced up there, blocked by Barrett. Talk about the uh, mound presence. Tell Will Oman that has confidence in his stuff, is very aggressive.
And his 3-2 is bounced behind first. Derek Lee with a great play on the bare hand, but late as Catalanato beats it out. So Dealey was able to kind of knock it down. It'll be a hit. And on a deflection, he was able to barehand it, but Catalanato got down the line in a hurry and beat Ullman to the base. It looked like Ullman got a late break to first. I mean, you got to continue to go over there, especially the plays we've seen Derek Lee make this year. You got to get over to that bag on everything. Yep. Ullman's just late getting there. See, he doesn't break initially. He sees that ball hit down the line. He waits to see if D. Lee's going to make the play. Even with the bobble, had Omen broken for first base right away, they would have gotten the out at first. So the inning continues for Greg Zahn. Four hits in the inning for the Blue Jays. And the last three have come with two outs. Strike on Zahn. In the whole base hit. Here comes a throw by Hollinsworth, and it's late. So Ullman getting to first late on uh, the infield hit by Catalanato ends up biting him as the Blue Jays add an insurance run. It's 5-3. We have a tendency to call the fundamentals of the game the little things. Talk about guys that do the little things right. Well, the little things end up being big things. Not getting over to cover first base, allowing the Blue Jays to continue this inning. Zahn comes up with a nine hopper through the left side that scores a run. So Ullman has allowed three inherited runners to score this year, including Aaron Hill tonight. It's going to be it for Ullman. Jerry Hairston will come in. And he's going to play center field. Corey Patterson made the fight. Michael Wirtz is the fourth cup pitcher here tonight. And he faces John McDonald. With runners at first and second, two big runs here in the eighth inning for the Blue Jays. Hairston into play center for Patterson. Slider from Wirtz. Now tied on the hit board 9 9. That's after five hits here in the eighth by the Blue Jays. They had four hits the first seven innings. has McDonald set up now he can get him out a couple of different ways Willemeyer got a very weak swing on a 4-3 grounder back in the seventh inning and with that slider that Michael Wirtz has he could also get a swing strike with that pitch high fastball Wirtz will throw to Lee to win the inning a damaging one however two runs for the Blue Jays Trail two to nothing early on, eventually tie three, and now they trail five three. Hollinsworth bunts it right back to Scott Schoenweiss. One out.
Michael Barrett coming up two for three to Grant by Institute Cubs upcoming schedule. WGN Wednesday and Friday, Fox on Saturday, ESPN Sunday night, and back on Comcast Sportsnet Monday night, 7 o'clock Central, as the Marlins come in. And here comes another forward call to the pen. Schoenweiss is out. They're making his 23rd appearance and facing Michael Barrett, who is homered, grounded out, and singled tonight. On one out. And now a 1 1 count. You know, Frazier, not a very big guy, about 5'10, 170 pounds, but you just saw right there a 92 to 93 mile an hour fastball, a real good overhand curve. He's working on a changeup. He had never pitched above double A until last year. It's a nasty curveball. 13 of his 14 appearances last year to start the season, he didn't allow a run. 17 for 19 and save opportunities as a rookie last year. He's from Oak Forest. 33rd round pick of the Tigers out of Southern Illinois. Speaking of Southern Illinois, early congratulations to Craig Albrecht, who will be graduating later in the week from Downers Grove North High, and he'll be attending Southern Illinois in the fall. Craig, the son of our producer, Bob Albrecht. Three and two. Daughter Lily on the right is finishing up freshman year at DePaul. Ah, they're all going to college. <laughs> So's dad's money. Michael Barrett high and deep left field, and he has his second home run tonight. Five to four. Nissan drive of the game. Michael Barrett's second home run, third base hit of the game, a high fastball. We I mean, need that ball a mile in the air, got it up in the wind, and just continued to carry out to left field. No chance for Catalanato out there. No chance for the people that had tickets. You got to be out on the street to catch that one. So Jerry Harrison with his first at bat. It's a 5 4 game. Well, the bad news for the Cubs is the Blue Jays keep taking the lead. The good news is the Cubs have been coming back all night. They have tied it twice. A third career two homer game for Michael Barron. Last time he did it, May 21st of last year against the Cardinals. Jason Frazier coming home and uh, pitching here at Wrigley for the first time in his career. Gives up a home run to the first hitter he's faced, Michael Barrett. Frazier has pitched at U.S. Cellular Field.
39,159 here at Wrigley tonight. Aaron Hill at third. two times against snapped a 14 game hitting streak last night bouncer to Orlando Hudson easy play Frazier does get out of it but he gave up a home run so the Cubs cut the deficit 2-1 Michael Barrett with two home runs tonight to the ninth inning 5-4 Four Blue Jays a bat in the ninth against Michael Wirtz. Who came on, got the final out of the eighth inning. And the Blue Jays scored twice. Hudson is 0 for 1. I guess uh, Jason Frazier and uh, Jerry Hairston saw them uh, facing one another in the bottom of the eighth were teammates in Southern Illinois so going at it here in the big leagues they faced each other last year two and on Hudson nope they did not face each other last year so the first meeting in the big leagues between the former college teammates they probably talked about it in college. Listen, when we get to the big leagues, if I ever face you, I'm going to take you deep. Frazier winning the first battle. Three and one on Hudson. Good man to keep off base right here. Hudson has base stealing speed. Four for five on the season. Also the kind of speed that could score from first base on an extra base hit. High pop fly back of third. And Ramirez made the catch. I think everybody in the ballpark waiting for Nafee to either call him off or make the catch, but Ramirez ended up getting it. Maybe he was calling him off. I'm not quite sure, but Ramirez ended up making the grab. Well, he should have been calling him off if he wasn't. He had a much better angle on that ball. You see, Aramis has to make a lunging catch, falling backwards into left field. Nafee standing right there would have been a routine catch for him. Disaster right there. Now Eric Hinsky with his first appearance. And he's pinch hitting here in the ninth. Of course, the 17th round pick of the Cubs traded to Oakland in 2001. Cubs drafted him in 98. He was a 2002 American League Rookie of the Year. And playing first base this year for the first time in the big leagues. He had been a third baseman. something you see every year in interleague play without the designated hitter usually a major producer in that opposing team's lineup is forced to the bench because there's only eight defensive positions out there on the field Shea Hillenbrand playing first base Aaron Hill playing third base kinski has been the man out so far in the first two games of this series Talk about this briefly. The first go round with interleague play, I really feel that in the National League ballparks, you should use the DH. Let the National League fans see what the American League game really looks like, and vice versa. In the American League parks, pitchers should be forced to hit. Let the American League fans see what the game is like with a pitcher in that nine spot. Three and two on Hinsky. 
Blue Jays got him from Oakland in December of 01. And the following year was a rookie of the year in the American League. Chop foul. Bruce Walton, the bullpen coach for the Blue Jays, is handling the first base duties in this series. Ernie Witt, who started the year as a bench coach, now the first base coach, but he's next to John Gibbons here in National League play. It's really interleague play, but in the National League park under NL rules. And with all the double switches, John Gibbons wanted that counsel in the dugout. So Hinsky walks with one out. It'll bring up Alex Rios. Wirtz will throw over to first Hinsky back in time. You got to keep an eye on Hinsky. You wouldn't think so by looking at him, but he's got base stealing speed. He's five out of six on the season. Very good speed for a big man. Danny Graves reportedly has signed with the New York Mets. Want to talk about where he would end up? Cut by the Reds. They're struggling to start the season. 20 games with a 736 earned run average. Was Danny Graves heckled by a fan in Cincinnati, made an obscene gesture to the fan. Well, going to Shea Stadium where obscene gestures are just part of the daily grind. Hinsky running. Pitch taken for a strike, and the throw just a little bit tardy. Hinsky to steal second. The big man, he accelerates quickly. Continues to accelerate into that head first slide and boy, but the ball beat him once again. We talked about the high tag. Doesn't always necessarily mean that the hand was in on the base. Looked like Todd Walker applied that tag up high on the shoulder before the hand got to the base. Time for the team lead and steals now. Napy will throw to first and say ball gets away from Lee and Hinsky's going to score. It's six to four. So the Blue Jays get that run right back after Barrett homered in the eighth. It's now a two run game once again. Oh, it's the hole between third and short. Napy could have gone to third possibly there, but Aramis Ramirez had been drawn off the bag trying to go for the ground ball. The only play he has is a throw off balance across the infield. It's in the dirt to Derek Lee. He just can't pick it. The ball rolls far enough away for Hensky to score. Going to be a single. And an error, no RBI as Hinsky scores as the throw got away. The error will be on Napy. So, Bob, a couple of errors leading to runs tonight. The uh, throw by Patterson in the fifth inning, and the throw by Perez here in the ninth, getting away from the first baseman lead. And in tight games, those are all huge. Rios running. And he's out. So Barrett throwing out Rios. He's one for two in this inning. A good quick release by Michael Barrett. Gets his body turned before he caught that pitch. And I mean the tag is right there. Way up the line, but right on the shoulder. Rios is still a couple feet away from second base when that tag is applied. Struck him out to end the inning. 
But the Blue Jays add a run. Their second unearned run tonight. And their lead is two to the bottom of the ninth. 6-4 Blue Jays, bottom of the ninth. They're at Wrigley Field and Miguel Batista. It's funny how it works sometimes. He went four weeks between save opportunities in May. Picked one up on May 3rd at Baltimore and went until the end of the month, the final day of May before his next chance. Well, he's trying to pick up back-to-back -back saves in this series. Got the save last night and he'll face Todd Walker here in the ninth tonight. The save in the ball game last night, even though he gave up a couple of base hits, he did strike out a batter, and then of course Jose Macias hit into that game ending double play. Cutter, cutter, cutter. He'll throw an occasional two-seam sinking fastball. He does have an overhand curve. He actually had about five or six pitches that he used as a starting pitcher, but relies basically on that cut fastball coming into closed ball games. So his first career save at Wrigley came last night. One and one on Walker. Popped up left side. Outfield grass. McDonald one out. As we speak, there's a four-way tie atop the wild card standings. You have four teams currently four games over 500. Diamondbacks, Braves, Mets, and the Cubs. Cubs in jeopardy of losing their second straight to start this homestand. And a couple of other teams just a half game out. Well, there's a log jam. And a lot of teams still in it. If you're around 500, you're in great shape. And if you talk about this series, with a loss tonight, the Cubs do not come back here in the ninth. It'll be a huge challenge for him just to salvage a finale tomorrow against Roy Halladay, who has nine wins and has a 0.68 ERA with two complete games his last five starts. And he's won all five starts. He's due for a bat. That's what you have to think yep. about it coming in as a Cubs. you got to find a way to take advantage, get a runner on base, get him over, get him in. Cannot afford to make the kind of fundamental mistakes they've made in the ball game tonight and expect to beat Roy Halladay tomorrow. in the first place he's not going to give you a lot of opportunities he's a tough guy to hit he knows what he's doing out there he knows his stuff and take advantage of every base runner O2 to Lee foul back Producer tonight, Bob Albrecht, Dave Turner, our director, Tamara Anderson, our associate producer, Christine Charbonneau, our booth AD. Great work as always from our Comcast Sportsnet crew here at Wrigley. Two strikes on Lee. The pitch. He struck him out swinging. Two down. What's up to Jeremy Burnett? slider from Miguel Batista here after a steady diet of cutters he takes a little bit off makes the break a little bit bigger bounces it in the dirt Derek Lee unable to hold up strike one on Burnett's
Strike two. see the Cubs at least bring the tying run to the plate here tonight. The guy who certainly could tie it with one swing and Ramirez on deck. It's going to require Burnitz to get out of an 0-2 hole here. Well, Ramirez has had the best at bats, the best approach, the best swings in this game tonight against whatever Blue Jay pitcher he was facing. The guy you'd like to get up there. Easy play as Hillenbrand touches first, and the Blue Jays have won the first two games of this series. The Cubs struggling in interleague play. One and four through the first five games. And after a six and one road trip, they have dropped the first two on this homestand. Batista with a one, two, three, ninth inning. To pick up the save, his 11th on the year, his second in this series. Well, let's check out our Hyundai player of the game. We're going to give it to Michael Barrett. He had two home runs, three hits tonight. Cubs came up short, but he had a very nice performance offensively. Now, why not Michael Barrett? He had a good night on an otherwise dreary evening for the Cubs. They made a lot of mistakes defensively. Missed some opportunities offensively, but Michael Barrett swung the bat well all night long. So that'll do it tonight for Bob Brenly and our entire Comcast Sportsnet crew. Len Casper saying so long from Wrigley Field. Final score tonight, the Blue Jays 6. Oh, I got the some Cubs claws and fingers. Showing why yes, they win. win. Well, am I the loss? Batista with a save. Our next Cubs telecast next you, Monday at 7 Central against the Florida Marlins. Game one of that series. I don't suppose that you women Stay about tuned. That. Joe's Crab Shack Post Game Live is coming up next. You've been watching Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.